Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see learning Python and today we'll talk about Object Oriented Programming or OOP. So what are classes, objects, why do we need to use them, how we can use them and so on and so forth. So let's just start. Lots of people asked me to do some videos on OOP, so for the beginners in Python and for intermediate programmers who just, who did not just start their journey but who know something about Python but have no idea about classes and objects. So I don't know if you accept uh, that video with lots of likes or if you won't. And it is why account is private, so the only one who will know about that is me. But if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe to my channel and so on. But now let's just start with the object oriented programming or as I will say it in that video, OOP, because it, it's just easier for me. So what is OOP and how can we use it? Imagine that we need to write a simple game. So a game where you have your main player and where you have your enemies. In our case, our main player will have, will have three properties. First of all, his name, so main player, main player name. Uh, for example, Andrew, in my case. Then it will have um, main player HP, for example, 100, and main player color, something like that. For example, green, because we are the good guys. And as you can see, we already have three variables for one, for one object. And yeah, as you can already tell, it's an object. And everything in Python is object, but um, don't think about objects as you would think about them in object-oriented programming, but just we have an object. So our main player, something, we have something, our main player. And we need three properties. Now we need three properties to describe that main player. It's not as convenient for us to work with three separate variables as it is to work with only one. That is why we can use dictionaries. So in our case, we can use main player equals to dictionary, but dictionaries have some problems with them. The first one is that they need lots of memory. So when you create a dictionary, you, not lots of memory, but they are memory heavy when we compare them to normal variables or to lists, tuples, and so on. And that is why I would like to leave that as just three variables right now and i'll also create function main player attack for example return attack something like that so of course you can do that all in the dictionaries you can do that all in lists but it's not as nice as it is with objects and classes and also as i said in our game we'll have our enemies so in our case we'll have maybe like five enemies so enemies like that and that's a list a list of enemies and mm, as you as i said we can use lists so for example enemy one is the name of our enemy then hp is 100 then cover is red and we can just copy that thing like five times and as you can see we already have some structure so we already have our main player and our enemies but <laughs> i said that we have some structure in the reality we don't have any structure at all because our code is just the variables, functions, lists, and um, some objects. There are no, there is no structure, and because of that, we need object-oriented programming. Because of that, we need classes and our objects. Okay, so now let's talk about classes. So what are those? And I would like to start with a simple class called human. And now imagine that everyone, me, you, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, everyone is a human so we are all are we are all humans but when we're talking about different people different people are objects so class is like a skeleton for your object for example class human can have name let me just write hp because we'll change it to our main player later and the color i don't know what color of your skin for example you can have three properties in everyone has those three properties but when we're talking about different people, those properties can vary. For example, me is a human, you are a human. And those um, objects are realizations of our classes. So once again, class is a skeleton for your object. And when we're talking about classes, let me just write it like that. So we have class human with different properties. And what we're saying when we write, um, for example, me equals human. First of all, we have a variable called me which points to our object human. And in our case, what we are saying is human, so me 
points to some object which was created from the class human. Boom. And that object has some specific properties. For example, HP, name, and cover. Something like that. So in our case, if we would change it to main player, main player, me and you would be the main will be the main players. So you and me are the main players. And we have name, HP, and our cover. And that's just the whole idea. So classes are skeletons for our objects. And classes can have different properties inside of them. And as you can see, my class has three variables. And what those three variables are saying is that every object of class main player will have name, HP, and cover. So if I'm saying like me equals main player, I say like me is a, an object that has HP, name, and cover. But if I'm saying you equals the object as well, what I'm saying is you, and then we need to copy that whole thing and put it there. So you is an object as well. And that is the main idea. So you, me, the same objects, the same, the same principles. And as you can see, different objects have different variables. So if I'm saying that me equals main player, and then I want to change my name, for example, if you have never worked with classes, then you don't know that we use dot to access the variables inside of our objects. So in our case, I'm saying me dot name. So my name is and uh, Andrew, for example, and your name, you dot name is subscriber, for example, subs like that. And what I'm saying is that that specific name. So for example, if I'm saying me dot name equals Andrew, I'm saying that that specific variable. So that specific variable will be Andrew. But when I'm saying you dot name, I'm saying that that specific variable for the object you will be subs. And that is very, very powerful. Why? Because we can copy the same logic and we can use the same names for different variables. It, it's, that is very, very important because in the real world, we have very, very similar, and in uh, programming as well, we have very similar properties. For example, names, mm, IDs, I don't know, mm, our height, our age, or all other things. So for example, if you're talking about programming, we have, um, we have integers, yeah? And every integer has a value. And if you, um, another example of classes and objects, integer itself is a class, but one, two, three, four are objects. So integer is a class, so it's like a number, but one, two, three, four are realizations. So those are really the numbers. Again, if we are talking about people, human is a class, so humanity, humans is a human. Everyone in humanity is, um, is a realization of human. So human is a class, but every person is an object because everyone has different properties, have different has different skills and so on. So that is the whole idea of objects and classes. So once again, class is a skeleton, but object is mm, the realization for that class. Let me just print print me.name. So you can see that me.name is Andrew. And once again, as you can see Andrew, let me just copy it there. So you are sure that if even if I change that variable inside of you object, it does not change in me. So yeah, that was kind of strange, but you.name does not change if I change my name, but if I would write you.name, I will see subs. So that, that's how it works. So we have different objects and all objects have different properties. For example, if you're once again talking about people, mm, I have name, which is Andrew. So my name equals Andrew, your name equals to something else, whatever your name is. And that is the main idea, but also we have our functions. So what we are already know about mm, our objects or sorry, our variables, but what about our functions? How we can implement a function and what is a function in a class? So every function in the class, well, almost every function should have, for example, in our case, it would be attack, should have self argument. And um, in our case, we can have our functions and they are called methods. So in classes, in object oriented programming, every variable inside of a class is called uh, property, but every function inside of a class is called method. But I would rather call them variables and functions, not, confu not to confuse you. Okay, so in our case, what we have here is define attack function, which accepts self uh, parameter and I just put pass here. 
So what is the idea of method or a function in a class? Function is what your class or what your object can do. So in our case, if we want to attack as a return attack, let me just put it right here. If we want to attack as a me, so as that first player, and let me just put it as first, first, second, so it would be easier for me, second, I just renamed the variable. If I want to attack as the first player, what I need to do is just print. Yeah, put print because I want to see that um, return. Put print first dot attack. And I just need to call the function. As you can see, we have self um, parameter in here. And we don't need to provide it there. I'll talk why in a minute. So if I run my program, as you can see, it says attack. So everything is all right. But what is self and how does it work? So as I already said, oh no, I, oh no, I removed my paint. Okay, so as I already said, we have two objects in our case. So first and the second object. Those objects have different name, HP and cover variables. So name, HP, cover. But also what do they have is different attack methods. So different attack methods like that. Oh no. Okay, select different attack methods like that. But what is the difference between um, our normal variables, our normal properties and methods? Because sometimes in methods we can or we want to access some things from our object. So in our case, if we want to say that um, not just attack, but for example, like Andrew attacks or Sam's attacks or HP and attacks. So I want to somehow interact with the information of my object with the variables of my object. Or if I want to call another function from my object, what should I do? Because in, in the real world, what do we have? We can say like, mm, you need to run 100 miles or you need to run 100 kilometers. And we as people know that that person, so I'm pointing to that person, should run 100 kilometers. But when we're talking about classes and objects, as you can see, I do not write functions inside of my objects. So first, I don't write any functions here. I write those functions inside of my classes. So imagine that you have a predefined set of of your um, abilities before you even are before you're even born. So every person has a predefined set of abilities. For example, we can speak, we can hear, and so on. And in our case, we cannot access um, the first um, player, the second player, because if I remove those things, how do we know how many objects? what are the name of those objects and how we can interact with those objects. We don't know anything about our objects because the only thing that we have is the class, is the skeleton for those future objects. But in that class, we also have self. So what is self? Self is a loopback link. So imagine that we have, or not imagine we have it like self and that is just a variable that does that. So that variable points to the object points to, to itself. So yeah, that's kind of the whole idea of self. If you worked with other languages and worked with other mm, objects and classes, it would be mm, self is uh, this. So self equals this. If you have no idea about um, other languages, then don't worry about that. But if you have idea and have, you have worked with other languages, with other object-oriented uh, systems, then you know that this, this keyword is literally self. So those are the same, uh, those carry the same meaning, but they are just different in self this and yeah, different words. Okay, so what do we have here? Self is mm, a link or not a link. Yeah, it's a link. It's a variable that points to itself. So we point to that object. And why is it beneficial for us? Because now what I can do is I can call self. Uh, let me just put a string here so I can put variables inside self name. And what do I say here? You need to call name or you need to put name, insert name of my object inside of my string. But what is the difference? The difference is that I do not, I do not say that you need to put first name or you need to put second player name. I do not say that you need to put that specific object name uh, into my string. But what I'm saying is that you need to put self name into my string. And why is that important? Because again, self is a link to the object that we, to the object itself. And what I can do here is I'm saying like, call or put the name of the object 
inside of that string that code that method, that code that function. So in our case, if we're calling first attack, what we will do? Ourself is object first. So what I can do is literally just print, print, uh, well, you will not see, but let's print it. Let's just print self. As you can see, main, main player object. So that is an object. Self, once again, is an object. And when I'm saying first.attack, I'm saying you need to call function attack for that specific object. And in our case, that specific object, every object has self. And self is a link to that object itself. And what I'm saying is that you need to call attack method from that object. And after that, inside of that object, you need to use the name for self. So you need to use the name, in our case, self is the first object, and you need to use that specific name. So that is the whole idea of self. Once again, we are saying that first, use attack, and we cannot use any first, second, or any other name for our objects in our classes. And because class, once again, is just a skeleton. We don't know anything about our objects yet. But what we do know is that every object has self, and self, in our case, is a link back to that specific object that called that function attack. That's the whole idea. And that is why we can use self.name attack. And if I would put uh, first attack and then second, yeah, I would, I would need it to call them second pair and first pair, but whatever. As you can see, I can use, or I, I see Andre attack and subs attack. So that is the whole idea. We don't use attack method from our class or from, from any other scope. What do we use is we call that attack method from our object itself. And that is the whole idea of classes. So why is it beneficial? Because once again, as you can see, I copy my logic, but I do not copy any of my code. The only thing that I copied here is like print, print, but whatever, I can remove those and first name, first name, but that is just, I do not copy everything. I have very cool way of structuring my data. And that is the, basic idea of object-oriented programming or OOP. So yeah, that is what I have for you today. Leave a like if you like that video, because I don't know if I need to make more videos on object-oriented programming, because the topic itself is really, really enormous. We have lots of things in Python, in, even in Python, like we have lots of things that are related to object-oriented programming, because that is just the top of the mountain. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. So thank you for the watching. Have a nice day. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a like, leave a comment and good luck.